Hello, my name is Landon Schlangen, and today we are going to work on the Personal Library Project, part of the Quality Assurance Projects on Free Code Camp. So let's look at the Personal Library. And we need to make something similar to this project right here, where we can put in a post, like we can post a book title. Like say we want to post the book named Hello. We can submit that, go back, and now it is right here. Hello, it has zero comments. We can also select it for a comment, so click on it, and then we can add a comment to it, like, hey, add that comment to the book of hello, and now it's on there as well. And I think if we refresh, yeah, now it says one comment. And we can also do it like this by posting the ID of the book and then commenting it that way. But yeah, it's basically just books, and then we can add comments to it, and we can also delete the book, or we can delete all books as well. So it's actually pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to be cloning a GitHub repo for this project and completing it locally. So let's open that up and see how to do that. So open up the GitHub repo and we want to click on this code thing, grab this HTTPS, copy that. And then we're going to open up Visual Studio Code as our editor of choice and open that up. And we want to be in our folder that we want to put this project in. In my case, it's Free Code Camp Projects 2. And then we just do git clone and we paste in that link right there. And that will paste in there and it will make our folder that we need, which in our case is the boilerplate project library. So I can CD into that. I also want to rename it first as well. So I'm gonna rename it to per personal library or library project. And now that I have it renamed, I can CD into it. There we go, CD into library project. And let's see what we have here. Inside of our package JSON, we have express chorus body parser chai mongodb zombie mocha.env. So I need to add a couple of things here. I need to add in mongoose to help with mongodb. And I also need to add in nodemon so that it will restart our server every time we make a change. So we're going to do npm i nodemon and also mongoose. Install those dependencies and we should be good to go. And it also installs all the other ones when we do this because, because it won't come with a node modules folder right off of GitHub. So that's why we have to do npm install. Even if you don't want to install anything else, you still have to do npm install so that it will... Uh, get our dependencies correct. All right, sweet. Now we have nodemon and mongoose. Next thing we have to do is take a look at our env file and we have to set up our port and our database um, string URI because we're gonna be using MongoDB Atlas for this. So I want to make a new file, call it .env, copy over the sample env, paste that in, and then we want to get rid of the sample .env and delete that. And then we want to open up MongoDB Atlas. If you don't have an account, it's free. Just uh, log in with Google, sign in with Google. That's what I did. And then set up your cluster correctly. Most of it is default anyways. And then we go to connect, go to connect your application and we need this URI string right here and go back into Visual Studio Code, paste that in for the DB string. And then we need to change up our password and our database name. I also want it to run on port 3000, random port that I want to use. I also don't want to show you my password or database name, so I'm going to change those quick, make sure they're correct for you. Now that I have my .env set up, I want to make a new file, call it database connection or db connection. This is where I'm going to connect to the database. Oh, it's also a db connection.js because it's a JavaScript file. And I'm going to connect to the database like so. First, I'm going to get mongoose and then I'm going to do mongoose.connect and get our database string with .env.db. And then I just export db and I'm going to import it inside of our server.js file. So we're going to go in here and we're just going to do require our connection just so that it makes sure to run that file dot slash db connection and it, that way it should run that next thing i want is a new file another new file this time it's going to be models so we need our models that we need and models.js and we're going to be having a book model so we're going to bring that in here so our book model all it's going to be is this book schema that has a title and the title is required the comments is in a, a string array. You know, we can just do a bunch of comments that are just strings. So that's all that is. And it's just one model this time, just the book, and we should be good to go. We're going to be doing most of our work inside of our routes file, api.js. This is where we do our git, post, and delete routes for our books, for all the books. And then we can select a book with an ID, and we actually can 
you know, get that book. We can post comment to that book and we can also delete that specific book as well. So the first thing we want to do inside of this file, the api.js file, we want to grab our book model and we can do that with this line. Const book equals require dot dot slash models dot book because inside that file, I do exports dot book equals book and then we can get it with dot book inside of this api.js file right here. And then we can use it just like any other mongoose model. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna actually start our server. So let's start this quick. We do actually inside of our package JSON, I want to add a script. So instead of just start, I want to do dev. I wanna have a dev one, which does nodemon server.js. So that will actually run it and then it'll keep running it as we make changes. And then we can just do npm run dev and it will run that script for us. And it looks like our app crashed. Let's see why. Cannot find module.env, which is weird because I have .env here. Not really sure what happened there. Let's try npm run start, still crashed. Can't find module.env. Hmm. This might have to go up here. Maybe that's why. Either that or I have to do npm install again. I might have had to do npm install. And now let's do npm run dev and it looks like it's working now. Okay, cool. I thought it would uh, install everything at the start when I installed Mongoose and Nodemon, but I guess not. So, okay, now I can go to localhost 3000 and here's our application. Can't really do anything right now. If I try and add a book title and submit it, it doesn't do anything and we have to make it do something. So let's take a look at our api.js file. First thing we want to work on is probably posting a book because we can't get any books without actually having some in the database. So I want to work on the post first. And the post is actually pretty simple, pretty simple. So rec.body.title, that will get the title that we input inside that box. It'll get this um, title that we put in there. First thing we wanna check is if we don't have a title, then we just send a missing required field title. Otherwise, we make a new book with that title and we add the comments in, which will be an empty array at the start. And then we do new book save and this takes in an error and data property and then we want to say if there's an error or there's no data which means something went wrong then we want to do res.send there was an error saving otherwise else we want to do res.json and we want to send it the book id and their title so we can do underscore id data dot underscore id and then title data dot title and that's our post function all done and dusted so now we should be able to post a new book to our database. Let's try it out. If I submit this new book, right now it's not getting it, but I should be able to check in my MongoDB Atlas and see if it's in there. So let's try another one here. Uh, book two, submit new book. And let's check our MongoDB Atlas. It should be in our collections. And I named this database library project and it's our books. And there we go. We have sad, fast, and book two and they're in our database. So that way we know our database is connected and we know how to post data to our database. So now we need to get these two books out of our database and display them. To do that, we're gonna be using this git route and this is uh, pretty simple too. All we have to do is do book.find and we want to find all books like that. And it takes a second parameter, which is the callback function of error and data. And we want to say if there's no data, which means it doesn't find any of them, then we can just do res.json and empty array. Otherwise, we want to format our data so that it looks like this with a comment count because it doesn't have that in there uh, at the start. And to do that, we want to do const format data equals data.map and we want to map each book and we want to return them as a object like this right here with a book ID, a title, comments, which actually it has those three by default, but we needed to add the comment count somehow. So this is how I decided to do that. Uh, we add in comment count and then do book.comments.length and that will grab the amount of comments that book has. And then underneath here, we can just do res.json and Put in our format data. So there we go, save that. And now inside of our project, personal library, if I refresh this, you see that we have our two books here, which is fantastic. That's awesome. Next thing I wanna work on is being able to delete all the books. And that's pretty easy as well. Just go down to this delete function. And we literally just do book.remove, remove all of them with this, uh, with these two curly brackets, which means get all of them. And then callback function, error and data. If there's an error or there's no data, res.send error. Otherwise, res.send complete delete successful, which is what FreeCodeCamp wanted to 
send back. So there we go. Now I should be able to save that. And when I delete all books, these two should disappear. Delete them. And maybe I have to refresh. And yeah, if I refresh, then they're gone. So that works awesome. Really easy there. Next up, we have the specific routes where we put in a book ID and we get it specifically. This overall is pretty easy. We pretty much do the same thing as up top, except we do find by ID and we do put in our book ID and then we do our callback function error data. If there's no data, no book exists or that book doesn't exist with that ID. Otherwise we send back the comments, its ID, its title and its comment count. Pretty simple there. Next up we have this post function. So we want to be able to add a comment to a book. So if I go here and add, add a book, I can't add a comment right now. If I try and add a comment, it doesn't actually do it. Even though I clicked add comment, it still has zero comments. And that's because we haven't done this post function yet. So to do this post function, this one is probably the most complicated route that we have in this project. So basically, first of all, we want to check if there's no comment. And if there's no comment, we want to do res.send missing required field comment and return so that it doesn't go on. And then we want to do book dot find by id put in the book id that we get from the params and then we do error book data as a callback function if there's no book data we want to do res dot send no book exists otherwise we want to do book data dot comments dot push this is the magic function that we need comments so we get the book data comments and then we push onto those comments the comment that is in that text box so pretty simple there That'll add another comment to the specific book that we want. And then we need to save the book data. So we want to do book data dot save. And this takes a callback function of error and save data or whatever you want to call it as a callback function. And then we want to send back some of the data about that book, which is right here, res.json. We send back the comments, its ID, its title, and its comment count. And the comment should contain the comment that we just pushed on as well. So now that should work. Let's see if it works inside of our code or inside of our UI, user interface. So I have this uh, one book here, click into it. I can add a new comment. Hey, add comment and refresh. And now it has one comment and it's hey right here. So now, now we know that works. Next up, we need to be able to delete this specific book. So if I delete this book, nothing will happen because I haven't done that route yet. So let's work on that now. That's this last one here. And this one is also very simple. We can basically just copy the delete function from here, copy this down, except instead of book.remove, we do find by ID and remove. So we do book.find by ID and remove. And then we put in the book ID right here, book ID, and then it does error and data if there's an error or there's no data, then it means that no book exists. So that specific book does not exist. Otherwise we send back uh, delete successful, right? Like that. There we go. Save that. And let's see how many tests we pass on free code camp. Um, first of all, I guess I'll show you that we can delete this specific book by clicking delete book. And then it says delete successful. Cool. So now let's try testing this on free code camp. Copy the URL, um, go to free code camp. Here we go. Personal library. Solution link, paste that in, complete the challenge. And it looks like most of them passed, except for a couple. I need to do functional tests as well. Um, I save those till the end and I just copy and paste them. Um, but this one is weird. Uh, let's see what we need to do here. Required, missing required field comments. I think this is the part that I'm getting wrong. So maybe I have to copy that. And I do missing required field comment. Oh, it's, except I did require, not required. So. Yeah, make sure to copy and paste that. And now it should be right. So let's try it out now. Delete this challenge. And the only one that's not passing is the 10 functional tests required. And I'll do that really quick here. We need to go into tests and our functional tests. And here they are. There's a couple here, a couple here. And there's 10 in total. And I'm just going to copy and paste what I have for this because they're pretty boring to do. So there we go. I just copy and pasted it in my my tests and they're not running right now because in my .env file, I have it commented out to do the tests. So when you want to run the test, you got to change a line in your .env file. So I'll do that quick. The node env equals test line is the, is the line that we have to change. And then once that changes, then it should run our tests automatically, maybe, possibly. Oh, I, I need to restart it. That's why 
control C and then node mon or npm run dev again. And now it's running our test and all of them complete. Let's take a look at what I did here. First of all, the example test, um, just make, make that pass somehow. I did it like this. Next up, we have test post API slash books with title. So I'm getting these uh, tests. Actually, no, these tests are already set up for us, kind of. But yeah, we need to test the post with API slash books. So I made a post request to that and I sent this title, test title, and then I end it and I assert that the status is 200 and I grab the book ID as well and set it to my book ID up here. That's so I can delete it later and test the delete functionality. But yeah, then I assert that the body.title equals test title and that it worked because this is making a real request and it's actually putting another book inside of my database. Next up, we need to test with no title given. So here I sent nothing and it should um, send back res.text equals missing required field title. So that works. Next up, we need to test get API slash books. So we get all of our books. And I'm just going to check that what's sent back is an array, which it is. Next up, we need to test getting a book with a specific ID with the ID not in the database. So here, I'm, the ID I send is invalid ID. And what's sent back is no book exists. Next up, test it with a valid ID. Here I send a valid ID. And it's the ID that I make when I make that one test title book. And I just make sure that that's what the title is. Next up, I post an ID with a comment. So here I add a comment, test comment to that specific book ID. And then I check that that comment is test comment. And then I do without a comment field. And here it says missing required field comment. And then I post with comment, but the ID is not in the database. So here's an invalid ID. No book exists of that ID. And then I check the delete functionality. And I delete that book with a valid ID in database and it says delete successful. And then I check with that ID not in the database and that just says no book exists. So those are the 10 tests we needed to do. Um, overall, pretty simple. And now I should be able to complete all of the tests on free cool camp. Here's the personal library project and let's try it out. And it completes all of them and I can submit and go to the next challenge. So cool. Next challenge up is Sudoku solver and it has to be functionally similar to this right here where we can put in a coordinate of like a1 and check if we can put a value in there. So here I check two valid false conflict in the region because there's a two right here. So I can't put it there. Let's try a six maybe see if six could go there. Check placement false no conflict column because there's a six in this column. Let's try seven seven should work. Check placement valid true. So then a seven would go there. Well, it's just saying that there's no conflicts in the region or the columns or rows. And we can also solve it. So if we just click solve, it will automatically solve it for us. And that's using an algorithm um, for backtracking. So it like checks every number and then it goes on to the next one if it works. If it doesn't work, then it goes back and then it tries a different number. And yeah, that's kind of how that algorithm works. So we're going to be implementing that in my next video. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. We built this personal library overall. It was much, much simpler than the issue tracker, which used like sub documents and stuff. This one just used an array of strings. So not too bad overall. And I will see you in the next video. Comment, like, subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.